Hey, welcome back to another DIY video. So following my last project where I experimented framing a window in the guest bedroom, if you guys didn't see that video, click on the top right hand corner to check it out. Anyways, I was really happy of how the window turned out. So I decided to frame all of the windows in our house. The idea of framing windows actually came from my stair window because every time I walk by it, I'm like, something is missing here. Let's jazz it up a little bit. So this was the window that I started with first. For all the large windows in the house, I use common boards that are 3 4 of an inch thick and 3 and a half inch wide. And they come in 8 feet long. For the smaller windows, I use the same type of wood, just only 2 and a half inch wide. I also use 1 inch furring strips for the ledge, or some people might call it the windowsill. All the woods came from Lowe's and I'll have the link to the wood materials in the description below. So I sat there and calculated how much it cost to do all this for each window and it came out to about $7 per window. So I'm like scored, let's do this. Anyways, I have learned that it's easier to paint them first, let the wood dry, measure, and then cut. I have settled with this modern farmhouse design where I used five pieces of wood for each window. Because of this design it has a window sill, which really is a little ledge that will be flush with the window frame on the bottom. I leave a half inch around the left, the right, and the top side of the window frame. For larger windows like the stair window, I left three fourths of an inch around the edges. What I've learned is that the more space you leave, it gives the illusion that the window is bigger than what it really is. Also too, what I've learned is that if you don't have a nail gun, you can totally still get the brad nails or finishing nails, whichever one you decide to use, and just hammer them in with a hammer. Of course, it will take longer. I just happened to borrow this nail gun machine from my friend, but she just doesn't know that I'm probably not going to give it back. Anyways, after nailing all the wood pieces onto the wall, cock everything to give it a finished look. Let me make it easier on what I did. For example, taking the standard window, I start with two vertical side pieces first. I am leaving half an inch around the left, right, and top edges. And I made sure the bottom of the two pieces is flush with the window because the sill piece will go right underneath to create a ledge. And because the top part won't be flush with the window, I leave half an inch on each side Again, to create the left, right, and top edges. After I get the two side pieces on, I take measurements for the other three horizontal pieces, leaving half an inch on each side to create a little overhang. Because the large window came out so good, I went and got more wood for the sliding doors. What I've learned is that not all windows are the same, even though you might think that they are. You think that a builder would build a straight wall, but no. So therefore, I did not cut all the horizontal pieces all at once. I worked on each window and cut them window by window. Then I went ahead and did the rest of the windows in the house. I only sanded the common board slightly around the edges, but all I did was really just painting them. And I like that there are imperfection in the woods and it totally shows through the paint and I think it actually gives it even more of a farmhouse feel. Like I said, it cost me about $7 per window. I think I have 23 windows total so that comes out to under $200 for this project. Which I think it would have cost so much more money to have it done by a contractor. So overall I'm happy with this project. It adds a little more charm to the house. Definitely makes the interior feel more cozy and it makes the window look more sturdy and bigger than they are. So uh, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and until the next video, let me know if you have any questions.